Hi, I'm Ronnie, and this is Camille. And in this video, I'm going to add a odometer and a speedometer to the cat wheel. I'm also going to give away a clock that has a chain for the display, and the chain is exactly the same chain that drives the odometer. So if you're interested in geared wooden mechanical mechanisms, or to know how fast a cat can run, or are interested in having a clock with a chain for a display, this is the video for you. In the base of the exercise wheel, there is a lot of space, and this is where I will add the extra features. I will start with the odometer. One way to determine how far a wheel has been moving is to embed a magnet in the wheel, and as the wheel turns, it passes a switch, and from this switch, you get the electronic signal, and from the signal and the frequency of the signal, you can calculate how far or how fast the wheel has been moving. Personally, I like mechanical models way more, so I designed this old school odometer, and basically this is just a small machine, and as the axis turns, it counts the number of rotations, and through a series of weird gears, it just counts up as the wheel turns. So the plans for this odometer is available in the description below. It comes with this neat little handle if you want to build your own. So through a gear setup that I will link to one of the rods, I will calculate how much the wheel has been turning and transfer the information to the odometer to see how much the cat has been using this wheel. Making the odometer starts with gluing together all the plywood gears and display discs. The mechanism is not unique and has been used in odometers and mechanical counters for many years. I just adapted it to fit the exercise wheel and added the latch to make it easy to reset. After all the parts are made, the set of numbers is printed. The discs are skewered onto a 4mm dowel and each number carefully glued into place. The housing is assembled and the whole mechanism is completed. The odometer works by engaging the gears of the higher order discs only once per full rotation of the disc that is one order below it. This is done by a weird small gear that has eight teeth on one side and four on the other. The four tooth side mesh with a large gear that has two teeth and lock the small gear in place until these two teeth rotate past it. The side with the eight teeth will then move a 20 teeth gear by one tenth, and since this is glued to the next order disc, it advances it by one digit. A problem with using a mechanical odometer on a cat wheel is that cats do not run in the same direction. Sometimes they will run in the one direction and sometimes they will turn around and run in the other direction. A mechanical odometer will both count up and down and my idea is to see how far they run in total. So over the year, how far have they moved? So to counter this, I designed this mechanism and it will take the input signal and it will change the output signal to be constant. So if the rotation is clockwise, the output signal's rotation will be counterclockwise. If the rotation is counterclockwise, the output signal's rotation will still be counterclockwise. And with that, I will ensure that it only counts up and never counts down. One of the problems of using wooden gears rather than metal gears is it is less accurate. There's more slop in wooden gears than in metal gears. And this leads to the direction changing mechanism getting stuck sometimes as it changes direction. But when it does, it jams up the whole system. The problem with that is that if it happens, it will break something. And I'm not interested in replacing gears or axles on a constant basis. So I over-engineered this a bit and to make sure that when the gear's stuck, there's no fatal breakages, I have a spring-loaded system. So when it stuck, it will push it down just a bit, just enough for the gears to release, and the mechanism can go freely. So the first step is to find a space to install this odometer, and then link it to this uh, constant gear changing device, whatever it would be called, and then to add the gears.
I removed the rod and the wheels and now I'm going to try to insert these small gears so the gears slip onto the rod and this will link up with the gear reduction system as well as to the speedometer. The first step of making a gear reduction system is to cut out all the parts. This is followed by assembling, making sure that everything fits nicely and that the gears turn freely. Every time the inner diameter of the wheel advances by 10 meters, that means when a cab runs 10 meters, the small wheel turns approximately 96 times. This means the small gear also turns 96 times. The gear reduction system is therefore designed to reduce the number of turns from 96 to 1. Several gears are used to accomplish this. Some have 60 teeth, some have 40 teeth, and some only have 10 teeth. I will talk more about the gear ratios and how this was calculated in the next video. The output is transferred to a spur gear that drives a chain which is connected to the direction rectifier. One of the spur gears is connected to a rubber band that provides tension to the chain. This is the only gear in the whole system that runs on its own bearing, as tension on an axle will make the mechanism stall. Making a wooden chain is a long and tedious process, and it's not the most exciting part of the build, but I am sharing some of the footage here. This chain is of course exactly the same chain that I am giving away with the clock kit. So if you're interested in spending a bit of time making your own chain, please leave a comment and tell me why you would want to spend your time making a chain. Inserting the gear reduction system into the rest of the machine was a bit problematic because firstly I measured wrong and I had to add spacers to the bottom of the system and secondly there's not a lot of space so it was tricky to get everything to fit nicely. I had to sand a few parts to get everything to fit into place. So I'm extremely pleased with this mechanism it works really well much better than I expected. So this one counts the number of meters the smallest value and then as it goes up this is 10 meters, 100 meters, one kilometer, up to 100 kilometers. There's a few unique features. So if I press this lever here, it disengages and I can reset everything, which is really nice. I, I didn't um, think about that it would work so nicely. And then the chain drives it. And the chain I used because there's a lot of play in this mechanism. And a chain is just a nice way to link up mechanisms that's not exact. Uh, so it accounts for all the inconsistencies and the slight bit of tension is enough to make sure that it holds it in place. But the nice thing is just to see how it works. So I'm quite happy with how the calculations worked out as well. The distance on the inner diameter is pi, so it's three meters that's traveled on the inner diameter as the wheel rotates once. So if you look at that zero there, if we get back to exactly the same place, this last wheel should be advanced by three. So let's see if it works out. And it does, it's just over three, 3.1. Also, of course, when you go in reverse, you want this to count up and not down. There is a bit of play. I think you lose about three meters every time for the mechanism to engage. So I think we'll see this gear move to the back as it engages. So the wheel will not rotate. So we lose a bit of information here. But then as it engages, it starts moving. So as the wheel moves back, it still counts up. So after the odometer was in and working and I was happy with it, I thought I should add the speedometer. And I came up with this design. It works on a flyball governor mechanism. And the idea I got from a channel called Generic Woodworking. And you should definitely head over to their channel at some stage and give it a look. It is a brilliant channel. They make all kinds of wooden models. And I can highly, highly recommend that you give it a watch. So my mechanism is heavily based on their design. 
and I'm quite happy with it. The problem that I had is I didn't leave myself enough space. I wanted big numbers on the odometer, so the whole thing increased in size and I left myself basically just 10 centimeters of uninterrupted space. So for that reason, I had to scale everything down quite a lot. So this was the original size that I had in mind. It was quite small already. And uh, I wanted to use the eight tooth gear that I already had with a rack, but that didn't fit. So I needed to go quite small. And these are the gears that I've been using for the speedometer. And the rack is much smaller. There's a lot less play or space for mistakes or tolerances when you have smaller devices. And that's one of the reasons why I 3D printed the rack part, because my skills on the lathe might not be that good to have these teeth as accurate. I also had to print my own springs. I initially thought that I would use pen springs. That would have been nice, um, but they are much, much, much too stiff for, for the device to actually open up. And I had to resort to printing my own springs. Springs were made by printing flat coils using PLA and PETG. These coils were then wrapped around a copper rod and heated up with a heat gun and then dipped in water. I used both PLA and PETG in a variety of thicknesses to get a spring that had the right stiffness. But with that, I think I will assemble this whole speedometer unit and try to install it into the space under the cat wheel. And let's do that and get one of the cats in to help me calibrate it. I also needed to shave down some of the edges to make sure that everything that opens up has space. And I needed to sand down some of the pieces in the mechanism itself to make sure everything fits. So it's not such a clean design as I wanted it to have. This is oversized and the speedometer is quite undersized, but that happens when you design things and do not think it through and plan the whole thing to start off with. But I think it will work and the next step is just to insert it. So let me finish it off and see if everything works. Calibrating the speedometer is a two-stage process. I used Camille to make sure that the spring is stiff enough and also to get the range of the needle. I think I've got the extreme ranges and I'll look back on the footage to see how much space I should give and where the needle should be. But um, thanks to Camille for helping me. The second step was to calculate the speed at each position. I used a drill to rotate the wheels at a constant speed and make a small mark on the dial. Then I calculated how far the wheel travels in 10 seconds at this mark, and I could determine the speed in meters per second. After that, it was a simple conversion to get it in kilometers per hour. I will spend a few days during this week to record Camille's speed on average, and will give some of the results in the next video. So the mechanism is complete and everything is working. And the final thing to do is of course, to add the plaque. And the final display plaque has kilometers on that the, the cats are running. And on this side, it gives an approximation of the speed that the cats are running. It is a wooden mechanism, so it's not 100% accurate and it jumps a bit, but it's close enough for me to know how fast they are running approximately. On the inner circle, there are numbers, and this is when the dial goes from zero to two to three ones. And if it passes the zero again, the reading is on the outer rim. And this makes it possible to have a larger range. It is possible, of course, to have a, a stiffer spring, but the stiffer spring increases in pressure as the spring compresses and you lose a bit of the information. You cannot go as high as easily. And the final step is just to add the indicator and I will set it to the zero position as close as, as, enough as possible. And with that, 
everything is complete. So in the end, I'm really pleased with how this project turned out. I'm really happy with how the wheel works, how it looks. It works much better than I expected. And I think the cats enjoy it. Camille is using it the most. And I think in the future, both of them will use it a bit more. I don't think Donkey will ever use it that much. But I'm even more pleased with the mechanical mechanisms that I've inserted to measure the distance and the speed. They work much, much better than I expected. And I'm really happy that I decided to use wooden mechanisms. So I'm really pleased with how it looks. And I think I will make more of these in the future. In the next video, I'm going to explain all the math that went into this project. It's really nice to know the concepts and the ideas to use it for projects in the future. I'll also talk about the issues that I had, how to correct for them either mathematically or in a future version. And I can highly recommend that if you are interested in building things that move with gears, that you should watch this video. It will give a lot of ideas. If you are interested in winning a kit to make your own clock that has a chain for a face, then there are two things that you need to do. Firstly, subscribe to this channel. And secondly, leave me a comment. I will contact the person with the most upvoted comment and I will ship the clock out to you. The plans for the clock is of course available in the description below. So if you want to make your own, it's also possible. If you are still watching, please consider subscribing. It does help the channel a lot. I am going to make more wooden mechanical mechanisms in the future. I am planning to use Strandpieste and have an interesting mechanism to make them walk. And I'm planning to give away Strandpieste kits when those videos come out. Thanks again to the Patreon members. You ensured that there was enough snacks for the cats to help me with this project. And thanks to you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers. So on this side of the base, I of course have the plaque with the names of the Patreon members. Thanks guys, you made sure that the cats were supplied with enough snacks during this process. But on the other side uh, of this plaque, I have a lot of open space. And one of the things that I thought of doing is adding a small bag with all the excess parts that I have. So I have a lot of small extra parts that I might need some dials and gears and things. So if the mechanism breaks, I have spare parts and I will just add them here and then they are safe and I can always get to them when I need to replace something without any problems.